in 1863, on the banks of the Missouri River, the last chapter in the monumental undertaking of the Transcontinental Railroad began. The workers of the Union Pacific Railroad began laying their tracks westward from Omaha through the wild heart of the North American continent. Massive challenges awaited them. Away from all civilization, the country was vast, the weather ruthless, and the challenges tremendously energy sapping. But there was a masterstroke of modern engineering to be accomplished. To tame the wilderness and to conquer it with steel, fire, and steam. Never before had anything like this been ventured. But the time was ripe. Greetings. My name is Thomas Clark Durand. Exactly, the head of Union Pacific. We will go down in history as the ones who created the Transcontinental Railroad. And that, my friend, is your job as chief engineer. I can supervise everything here on site right now, as I have to meet with some politicians in Washington. <laughs> First, you should familiarize yourself with the basic controls. Move the camera in all directions. Now, test the camera's zoom function. You can also rotate the camera. Give it a try. Very good. Now you know the basic controls. Your first task is to create a rail connection between Omaha and Norfolk to the northwest. Both cities will need a station for this. You already have a station in Omaha, but you still need to build one in Norfolk. To do this, switch to building construction mode. Very good. Now the two stations need to be connected with tracks. To do this, switch to track construction mode. Now plan the tracks between the stations in Norfolk and Omaha. To do this, select the two station tracks one after the other. Then pay for your track planning. Now create your first train, so that you can set up a rail line between your stations. Initially, your train only exists on paper. It's not much use to you without a locomotive. Additionally, each train needs a rail line that passes through all the stations it should stop at. Now join your two stations to the rail line by selecting them one after the other. That's enough for your first rail line. Now confirm it so it becomes active. Very good. Now you can see the journey your train will take. If there is something to transport, the train will automatically take it. However, as each locomotive needs water, sand and lubricant on its journey, you have to place a supply tower along the route.
very good. The train is now traveling between Omaha and Norfolk. But you can do even more. Each city needs goods from the surrounding area. For example, every city needs corn. Look, there is a corn farm near Omaha. Until now, the corn has made it to the city in the conventional way, but we want to change that. Now construct a rural train station in the marked location with a corn farm within its radius. Now connect the new rural train station to the station in Omaha. And now things are getting tricky as we have to deal with a logistical problem. As Norfolk should also enjoy fresh corn, there will soon be two trains traveling on the stretch of track between Omaha and Norfolk. Of course, this will then result in a conflict. Since trains cannot travel through each other, you'll need a side track between Omaha and Norfolk. This consists of one parallel track and two signals. First, create a sidetrack. It needs to be at least long enough for a fully loaded train. Excellent. However, your trains won't necessarily use the sidetrack, as they generally always take the shortest route. For this reason, you also have to specify the direction of travel on each parallel track. Now open building construction mode and set up a signal in the highlighted area pointing in the direction of the switch. Trains will then be able to stop here when the single track is in use. Now make sure that the track can only be traveled in one direction. For this purpose, set the signal so that trains coming from the opposite direction cannot pass. Excellent. Now do the same on the parallel track so that each parallel track has a different direction. Place a second signal in the highlighted area and block the track to trains coming from the opposite direction. Very good. I'm sure that wasn't at all easy. You will soon come to realize that signals are an important aid in guaranteeing smooth rail operations. You will find more information and tips under Hints and Tips. Now assemble a new train and give it a locomotive and a rail line. Your new rail line should run via Omaha to Norfolk so that the people of Norfolk can be supplied with corn. Excellent. The corn farm will automatically make use of your train because the cities along your rail line are demanding corn. Conventional transportation is much more costly for the farm. We are still missing something. Locomotives wear out over time and need to be regularly maintained so they can perform their duties more reliably. 
For this purpose, there needs to be at least one maintenance building on each rail line where locomotives can be serviced if necessary. Construct such a maintenance building at your station in Omaha now. To do this, select the station itself and expand the station with this building. Right, we've been lollygagging for long enough. I need to return to Washington for further miserable negotiations with our representatives of the people. Uh, I've written a task list for you. Take a look at it and complete the tasks within the given time period. Do not disappoint me. Good. That's finished. You're making progress. Those politicians in Washington get on one's nerves. But now let's get back to your tasks. As you can see, Cheyenne is still a little town hoping for an upswing caused by the railroad connection, but a city will only attract new inhabitants if it is supplied with enough goods. Cities receive basic goods from the surrounding area. If you construct stations in the right places and establish rail lines, your trains will be used to transport goods and you will make profits for transportation. But for this you have to know what goods a city actually needs. You can find out any city's current needs. Now select Cheyenne and view the city's demand for goods. 
As you can see, Cheyenne currently needs only a handful of goods, and you can only deliver goods that are in demand. As the city grows, it will demand further goods. At the moment, you can supply grain and wood. Both of these goods are available to the north of Cheyenne. Connect Cheyenne to a timber business and a wheat farm and establish a new rail line that connects them both to Cheyenne. Well done. The city will soon grow. You can see how well it is being supplied at any time in the city dialogue. Basically, a city will grow once its demands are sufficiently met. I think you have learned enough. Complete the rest of your tasks.
Now you've managed to cross the Great Plains, a masterpiece.
Ah, yes, one more thing. Your company has also a research department to help you unlock new locomotives and other innovations. Open the research dialogue to find out more about it. Here you will find the advances that can be achieved in the current era. Advances from previous eras are usually already active, but what the future holds, we do not know. For each advance, you require innovation points, which you get automatically each month and which can be increased in various ways. Now take a look around here and then unlock an innovation of your choosing. How about a new locomotive? My opponents say I'm lining my own pockets. These are, of course, hideous lies. And look at it this way. With the profits I'm making, I can invest much more. Jobs, jobs, jobs. Cheyenne will flourish thanks to you. And for each mile of track that we lay, we receive 10 square miles of land. The politicians have no idea of the value of the assets they are giving away, but that stays between us. I have to wrangle with a lot of competitors, but if one person really gets on my nerves, then it's that Beatrix von Pomp. What? You haven't encountered it yet? Be glad. She takes everyone to the cleaners. Excellent. Cheyenne is becoming a major railroad hub, and the credit is all ours. Progress is enormous. The Far West is no longer so far away anymore, and the people are slowly realizing that trade helps create prospering cities. We still have a long way to go, but the Transcontinental Railroad is coming. In spite of all the challenges, the Union Pacific Railroad managed to cross the endless expanses of the Great Plains and conquer the merciless slopes of the Rocky Mountains. The Central Pacific Railroad approached from the west, but the winter of 1868 brought all work to a standstill. The two lines lay just a few hundred miles across from each other, in the middle of nowhere in the mountains. The dream of the first transcontinental railroad seemed to be within touching distance, but was buried by house-high masses of snow and blown away by icy snowstorms, a dream that had begun almost four decades before. In 1830, the prosperous industrial centers on the east coast of the United States of America were poorly connected to the mainland. Insufficiently developed toll roads and slow ship canals were the only options when making long journeys. Farmers, businessmen, and travelers lamented these long, arduous, and above all, unsafe transport routes. They were not only an inconvenience for travelers, but also shackles on an emergent nation's hunger to grow. But at this time, a development from England was taking its first steps and helped keep alive the hope of many cities in the East of reaching greater economic influence and growth. I've been waiting for you. I'm Philip Evan Thomas. 
It's always been my dream to build a railroad to the Ohio River and beyond. That would help everyone, both the settlers and the natives. And I need your help with that. First of all, I have two tasks for you in order to build a base from where we can monitor further activities. But as I learned back when I was a bank clerk, the books must always balance. So take care to make a profit, even with these preliminary assignments. This new fish swimming in our pond. Greetings from the beautiful city of Charlotte. What was your name again? Beautiful stranger, wasn't it? Well, that's what you look like. Just let me know if you need help push starting your trains. Look, to be clear, I have nothing against strangers. Some of my best friends are strangers. But you're not from here, and New York is my city. That's where I do business. I say when the trains roll, where they're going, and why. As long as you don't get in my way, everything will be A-OK -okay between us. I see our two competitors have introduced themselves to you. They have different approaches and so will behave differently. Basically, however, they want to expand their rail networks and make a profit just like you do. So stay on guard and don't let them take advantage of you. Don't worry about it. Who's interested in what the tabloids say, right? <laughs> <laughs> 